Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for today's virtual media briefing about COVID-19 in London and Middlesex County with London Mayor Ed Holder <coughs> and the Medical Officer of Health and CEO of the Middlesex London Health Unit, Dr. Chris Mackey. I'd like to mention right off the top today that we are having some connectivity issues on the producing end of today's webinar. So we do ask that if the audio is a little uh, shaky or if the picture freezes a little bit, uh, we are doing our best to address that. But we wanted to advise you in advance of that occurring. Uh, we'd like to welcome the media who are on the call today and invite them to submit their questions using the question forum here on Microsoft Teams indicating their name and their media outlet. We'd also like to welcome those tuning in on Rogers Television, the Rogers Facebook page, and the Rogers YouTube channel, as well as listeners to Global News Radio, AM 980 CFPL, and those who are following today's media briefing on the CTV London website. We'll get to the opening statements right away, and we'll start with Mayor Ed Holder. Mayor Holder. Thank you, Dan, and good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to start today uh, on the new job numbers that were released earlier today. We said uh, last week and earlier that we were expecting pain and that's exactly what the numbers from May confirmed. Uh, since the economy was shut down in mid-March, according to Stats Canada, we've now lost uh, here in our region 29,000 jobs. Almost one third of those losses came just this last month. I've been brutally honest about the economic challenges since the onset of COVID-19. And I do so again when I say based on the data, London appears to have hit bottom of its job losses. And I am hopeful and we're slowly seeing job, uh, signs, signs of jobs returning. It's a long road back. This unprecedented 29,000 jobs lost in just two and a half months. Well, that's the highest uh, number of job losses we have seen in such a short period in time in London's history. We're continuing to work closely with all sectors of our economy as part of the Mayor's Economic Impact and Recovery Task Force. These discussions are now totally focused on recovery. Questions we ask, how do we get people back to work quickly and safely? How do we provide them with necessary supports? How do we do all that while guarding against a surge in COVID cases, which could send us all back to square one? With the work we're doing locally, it reinforces the need for emergency operating funds from the federal and provincial governments. So the, the Prime Minister announced today the federal government's commitment to support a safe uh, economic restart across Canada. Uh, with a significant $14 billion in federal funding. Uh, that funding is going to be provided to provinces and territories uh, in the form of targeted transfers with various criteria. But it's most importantly, it's the federal government's clearest commitment yet to work with the provinces to solve our municipal financial crisis because without emergency funding, we're out of options. Enabling municipal debts won't work. We wouldn't service debt without huge property tax levies. This is no time to cut frontline services and shelving infrastructure projects undermines the recovery everyone is counting on. So again, we're looking on Ottawa and the province of Ontario to work together and get this done. Secondly, and equally important and, and critically important in, its, in, in, in respect to the Black Lives Matter protest. I sent out a press release a little earlier uh, uh, today and let me state in no uncertain terms that anti-black racism exists, systemic racism exists, and both exist here in London, Ontario. It's not my personal opinion, it's a reality. So whether it's better or worse in our city compared to elsewhere, doesn't matter. What is relevant is that it happens and it happens on a regular basis in ways that are both overt and subtle. What matters is that what we collectively commit to as Londoners, as human beings, to the, is to the eradication of anti-black racism action that's what truly matters and black lives matter the protest taking place this saturday in victoria park has been organized by five young black women from london they have my respect and admiration they've made it clear that this is to be a peaceful protest they've stressed repeatedly the need for appropriate physical distancing while fundraising to secure ppe for those who take part for my part, based on recommendations from public health authorities and to abide by directives contained under the Ontario Declaration of Emergency, I will not be attending Saturday's event in person. I do, however, plan to watch and listen intently online. I've been telling Londoners for the last 10 weeks to avoid large gatherings as we are in the midst of a deadly pandemic. This has been and will remain my approach until it is safe to do so otherwise. At the same time, I don't question those who make a different decision on Saturday. Their hurt, their pain, their frustration, their fatigue is real. 
for those who are impacted, anti-black racism itself is a lethal public health issue, one that predates COVID. As my colleague, uh, Councillor Mosley said earlier this week, London isn't innocent. The path towards redemption must have only one outcome, the eradication of anti-black racism. This effort has my full support and dedication. I commit to providing space for, learning from, and listening to those with lived experience. I commit to using my influence as mayor to ensure those in similar leadership positions do the same. I will ensure the voices of those without titles, especially those without titles, are directly involved in developing solutions. My hope is everyone taking part in Saturday's protests stays safe and stays healthy. Uh, thank you and to you, Dr. Mackey. Thanks very much, Mr. Mayor, for, uh, for all of those comments. Uh, I will jump straight into the numbers. Locally, we've had very few cases over the last couple of days. Uh, only one case uh, reported to us by the lab system yesterday and no deaths in the last 24 hours. Uh, provincially, the case count of 344 uh, is actually quite encouraging given that we had the highest number of tests processed ever in Ontario uh, yesterday, over 22,000 tests processed. Uh, great to see that case count uh, relatively flat. When we look at other indicators around the severity, severity of disease, the picture is quite reassuring as well. The number of hospitalizations uh, has now decreased uh, pretty steadily since the beginning of May when that indicator peaked. The number of intensive care unit uh, patients with COVID across Ontario has declined steadily since the beginning of April. Uh, when that indicator peaked and the number of people uh, on the seven day rolling average of deaths declared uh, is the lowest that it's been since April 12th. All very encouraging from the provincial perspective. Uh, briefly building on the mayor's comments. Uh, thank you to the mayor for the support of uh, eliminating anti-black racism, which uh, as we all know is a significant public health issue that has significant impact on the health of those affected, um, including higher rates of mortality, higher rates of coronavirus, higher rates of heart disease and many cancers. Uh, and uh, it's in all of our interests to address anti-black racism and eliminate systematic bias from our society. Uh, so thank you for your support of that cause, Mr. Mayor. And uh, Dan, happy to take any questions. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor and Dr. Mackey. Uh, we actually don't have any questions in the question queue right now, and uh, that may be uh, because there aren't any questions being submitted, but I am uh, wondering if it might have something to do with our connectivity today. So uh, I have provided in the uh, Q&A uh, some opportunities. If you have submitted a question through the question forum here on Microsoft Teams and it has not come through, you can send those to dan.flaherty, F-L-A-H-E-R-T-Y, but I think most of you know that, at mlhu.on.ca. You can also text them to 519-617-0570. And uh, it looks like we've got one that has come through, so that's good to know. Uh, Mayor Holder, this question is for you, and it comes from Norm DeBono at the London Free Press. Mayor Holder, London and area has recorded double digit unemployment numbers today, nearly 12% highest since 2009. Uh, can you speak for a moment about the long term economic forecast for the city and overall the employment scene? Well, Norman, let, let, let's take us back to February of uh, this year when uh, not only was the Canadian economy uh, doing uh, very well, but London and Ontario had the second fastest growing economy um, in the country. So there's a lot of optimism. Uh, we had said uh, our goal uh, from when I first uh, took office was to find some 13,000 net new jobs um, uh, during the course of the, of the term of council. And in fact, we accomplished uh, that and uh, more than that by 50% uh, uh, over the first uh, year and a bit. But now reality has hit. Uh, no one, uh, I guess, plans for a pandemic, pandemic to the extent that uh, that this has hit our economy. And uh, and uh, the people that uh, 
that uh, from an economic standpoint, we know there are going to be some uh, businesses that won't return because it has just been too uh, too difficult for them. And we're only in phase one of a three phase uh, provincial uh, economic restructuring. So when we look at that, um, uh, I would say those are the negatives. The positives are that when you imagine that we're working to get these numbers that we provided uh, through Stats Canada, what you're working on is a rolling three month uh, average. And uh, so we have uh, three months of continued job losses. When you look at some of the trends Canada wide, uh, I'm optimistic that as 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 the as businesses open up, as the economy opens up, people are coming back to work. Uh, you'll see that as the CERB benefit uh, uh, phases out, there'll be more people back to work because to the extent that it uh, was uh, easier to uh, stay home and when you've got children at home, you didn't have to deal with daycare or other issues, babysitting and the like. So, um, so those things will uh, tighten up. Here's here's some optimism. Uh, we're not in a position quite to declare it right now, but I can tell you that there are a couple of businesses that will be uh, setting up shop in London, Ontario, creating uh, new manufacturing facilities in London uh, in June. We think that's uh, that's extremely positive. We've got a very active uh, London Economic Development uh, Corporation that is working to uh, to work with the city and, and get employers um, uh, focused on what we can do to help. And it's why we put together the uh, mayor's task force on uh, on economic uh, impact and recovery, and we're now focused on recovery. So maybe in politics you have to be a bit of an optimist, but I would tell you that from my standpoint, I think there's good reason uh, to, to be optimistic going long term. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, for that response. And we are still uh, looking for those questions, and I, I'm not seeing any new ones either through the email or through the question form here on MS Teams or through text messages. So I'm thinking that it may just be that the bright sunshine and warm temperatures outside are maybe too much of a draw uh, for folks. So uh, we're going to uh, to call it early today and we do appreciate you tuning in for today's virtual media briefing. We'll be back on Monday and a reminder also to the media tuning in. Uh, there was a public service announcement that was shared today from the Middlesex London Health Unit about the change in hours at the Oak Ridge Arena Assessment Center. That comes into effect on Monday morning when it will open at 9 a.m. and close at 5 p.m. The hours at the Carling uh, Heights Optimus Community Center Assessment Center remain the same, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and open seven days a week. And again, at Oak Ridge, it is open Monday to Friday. And as of Monday, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Dr. Mackey. We appreciate your time as always. And we'll see everyone again on Monday afternoon at 2 o'clock. Have a great weekend.